Atherosclerosis is the buildup of fatty deposits, including cholesterol, in the walls of arteries. It's a major cause of cardiovascular disease, including stroke and heart attack, and contributes to the death of around 70 million people worldwide every year. This short presentation illustrates the key stages in its development and its main impact on cardiovascular health. Cholesterol is a natural, fat-like substance and is essential to health. However, too much cholesterol in your blood can be harmful. Cholesterol is produced in the liver, but can also be found in certain foods, such as those high in saturated fats. There are many types of cholesterol. The main type involved in atherosclerosis is called LDLC, or bad cholesterol. Another type of cholesterol, HDLC, is called good cholesterol. It's important to increase HDLC as well as reduce LDLC when treating high cholesterol. A normal artery wall consists of three main layers, a thin, smooth layer that lines the inside of the artery to help blood flow, a muscular elastic layer that helps the artery pulse to push blood around the body, and a tough outer layer to protect the artery. The exact cause of atherosclerosis is not known, but several factors, including smoking, high blood pressure, diabetes and high cholesterol, are known to damage the smooth lining of the artery and contribute to atherosclerosis. Once this layer is damaged, the bad cholesterol, LDLC, can get into the wall of the artery. There are four key stages in the development of atherosclerosis. The body tries to defend against the invasion of LDLC into the artery walls by activating specialized cells called macrophages to consume the LDLC. They become enlarged cholesterol-enriched cells called foam cells that are embedded in the vessel wall. The accumulation of foam cells can be seen by the presence of fatty streaks in the vessel wall. As the fatty streaks grow, the body tries to protect the artery from them by surrounding them in a fibrous capsule. At this stage, the growth is called a plaque. As the plaque gets bigger, the body tries to preserve the blood flow through the artery. The plaque expands into the elastic layer, which stretches in order to keep the opening of the artery the same. If the plaque continues to grow, its expansion will eventually intrude on the inner opening of the vessel as the elastic layer cannot stretch any more. This reduces the ability of blood to get through the artery. At this stage, physical symptoms such as angina may appear. Also, over time, calcium may be deposited in the plaque, making it hard and inflexible. This reduces the ability of the artery to expand to increase blood flow when needed, for example during exercise. As the plaque grows into the artery opening, it squeezes the blood through an ever smaller gap. The resulting increase in pressure at the narrowing can damage the capsule covering the plaque, which may then rupture, resulting in a blood clot that can completely block the artery. Depending on the location of the blockage, the consequences, such as stroke or heart attack, may be severe and could be life-threatening. Atherosclerosis is progressive and it can take many years before symptoms appear. But some people can have no symptoms even with extensive atherosclerosis and are at risk from sudden death. The symptoms depend on the site of the affected artery. In the heart, it can manifest as chest pains, angina. In the brain, as a type of mini-stroke called transient ischemic attacks. And to the legs, as a cramp-like condition called intermittent claudication, which can result in amputation of the limb. If a plaque ruptures, the resulting blood clot may block the artery and cause a heart attack or a stroke, which can often be fatal. Atherosclerosis may cause the artery wall to weaken, causing it to bulge under the pressure from the blood. This bulge, called an aneurysm, can rupture, and the resulting bleed, called a hemorrhage, can be fatal. We hope, after this presentation, that you understand how the bad cholesterol, LDLC, contributes to cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis, and what that means for your health. We also hope you appreciate why always taking your medication, as prescribed by your doctor, is so important in maintaining low LDLC and high HDLC in order to reduce your cardiovascular risk.